So in the meantime, um, same to our audience. Um, today we are having Italy on board as well. So Welcome. Valentino, uh, a great pleasure to, to have you here. My pleasure. My pleasure. So Thank how, you is, for... how is Rome? Uh, blocked. <laughs> it is now, no, I mean, the weather is great and there is sun very 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 nice weather but actually we have to be at home so i mean till till sunday actually i mean we have been doing i mean we have been in quarantine for one month and a half now uh, so far so uh, start to be tough but yes actually you know as uh, 90 as the, the the big part of uh, of the world i mean the yeah yeah actually uh, uh, something what is um, already like um, the same what we have in common Buenos Aires and uh, Italy we are all locked in that's the, yeah. the Germany our audience from Germany have some more liberty and um, I always follow the discussions in Germany right now the press and they're all yeah. claiming for more freedom more liberty more and I said like oh you already can go out we cannot even go out for 500 meters to walk our, exactly. uh, our walk our dog around the block it would be great but well and uh, we are still waiting for Pedrag as well he's from Shanghai so China is joining us uh, as well I will see if China is making it uh, he's a really interesting interesting artist as well so from the University and School of Creativity and Art in Shanghai in China so China being in the center of the discussion of this pandemia no will be interesting as well so Italy and China. Um, <laughs> well, let's see how many are already joining. Well, we have 31 participants. We can start with a small, short introduction. Uh, Christian, if you are ready. Hello, hello everyone. Welcome yeah. everyone from both sides of the pond. It is a real pleasure to be here again, Verena, accompanying you and uh, well, I'm representing Radio Cultura, which is a local radio broadcasting system sustainability and environment are a big part of our program. Uh, our program is Estilo 21 and we really are very proud to support uh, this kind of webinars and of course Joaquin who is challenging us with new ideas and challenging us to rethink what we are doing and what is happening and last week we had uh, the day of the earth and we had this interesting webinar also for, for the local market and we were talking about different things and uh, as said, uh, everyone is asking, I mean, we are all confined uh, as our Italian colleagues said, or, or the majority of us are. So this gives us more time to think and also people are continuously thinking, when are we going back to normality? And we know that normality wasn't working at all. So we shouldn't go back to normal, we should go back to a better normal. And I, I believe Joaquin is the right person to to challenge us uh, with new ideas and, and giving us a new approach and, and rethink what is happening uh, in the earth. And maybe for the first time in decades, we are all united because we have all the same problem right now, isn't it? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, and well, uh, also I have to, would like to welcome our audience, our big audience uh, who is following the, the webinar through Zoom. Last week, Zoom was not big enough <laughs> because we had a lot, of, a lot of people that couldn't attend, but uh, maybe this time they could attend as well, even for the European audience. So then I believe this webinar is getting bigger and bigger. Yeah, and it's the interesting part of it, especially because uh, uh, Joaquin, he will tell us about his new project because we are already part of the new project actually with this discussion and conference. So it will be really interesting. Um, well, um, if yeah, before we, well, maybe we can just get started. I think we have like, we're German time and uh, Argentine punctuality. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. So it's a good combination. It's a good combination, I think. Then we have this, this uh, Spain here. So Claudia from Spain and Cuartes and Frank from uh, Argentina, Johnny from Puerto Rico, Valentino from Italy. And uh, yeah, who else is joining here right now? And I missed Guillermo also from Buenos Aires and uh, Christian, of course, and Joaquin. So uh, we are all waiting here and just get started, I would say. Um, I make a short introduction about um, what is Manos Verdes also and um, 
what are we doing? Taking care of our planet is actually our main mission. Uh, our main mission is to, to generate awareness for the responsible use of our natural resources and we mainly work in environmental education. But we, we also promote ex exactly the exchange of knowledge and technologies for the protection of the environment. So especially between Europe and Latin America, but actually now it's more international already because it's, we also have a big exchange with Asia. So with the camera of Mercosur ASEAN, Andrea Guadalupe, she cannot join us today, but um, she sent us her best wishes. So we always aim for innovative solutions also to solve existing problems through joint developments. And um, actually we start with each of us. Our vision is really that every individual takes care of our environment and achieves a responsible and sustainable use of our resources. So back hands on, but the responsibility has everybody of us. So that's our main focus of Manos Valdes. I don't want to get into more detail. Our website is not working right now. I just admit, uh, so please, for any information next week, I think we will go online with a new version and uh, our um, social media are the best information source right now. Today, Joaquin will give us an overview about his, some of his projects he was working with and he has really some really interesting projects and uh, well, he's an in, he integrates art, science and technology in artistic production since 1990 already no? uh, before you were an engineer studied engineer you were an entrepreneur you were um, selling skateboards as well for some time in in argentina so really an interesting um, profile so and um, his work has been exposed in museums galleries and biennales across the world like as electronica in austria and the biennale of arts in venice and besides he's the founder and director of interactive the Interactive Technology Center Exploratoria in Buenos Aires, Argentina, which objective is to support the teaching of physics, chemistry, biology, environmental science, robotics, and informatics in a creative and interactive way. And he also was executive director of the Latin American and Caribbean Network for the popularization of science and technology of the UNESCO, which objective is to connect and support the different science and technology center in this region. Um, just a shortcut of your bio, because, because your bio is really in, interesting. Um, I don't wanna go into more details, but if somebody of you has some more questions later on, we have Facebook, internet, also well, the website not for right now, uh, but you can send us all, for, all of your concerns to us by Instagram, Facebook, or uh, also Twitter or email. So I just give the word now to um, the other participants to have a short um, overview, give a short overview which organization is participating. And um, maybe Claudia will start today. Claudia, are you prepared? Um, yes, okay. Claudia okay. from Coartis de Barcelona. <laughs> Thank you for the inviting me again to this conference. And Coartis is an international nonprofit organization that seeks to generate connection between art, science, and technology. We are a bridge between these professionals. We create or, and organize and produce exhibitions, expeditions, research, and conference that tackle ecological issues as climate emergency and the biodiversity crisis. And so should I ask uh, Joaquin right now or? I think the question, keep it for maybe later. Then later. we start okay, after the okay. presentation again with the question, but keep it in mind, especially. <laughs> okay, and that's all, a short introduction. Okay, um, go back to, to Buenos Aires, Frank. Do you want to get started? Hey, hello everybody. I'm Francisco Paredes from Buenos Aires, Argentina, visual artist and cultural manager. 11 years ago, I founded La Paternal Recicla, where we promote environmental awareness through creativity, art and design. We are currently developing a project to activate sustainable culture for small and medium communities. Okay. You have interesting gardening project, urban gardening project also, we heard last time. And you had a lot of participants from La Partanal in our last conference. So really interesting what you're, what you're doing. 
Um, I, I just select and we go to Johnny to Puerto Rico to change a little bit in between countries. Hi everybody, my name is Johnny Lugo Vega. I am a conservation scientist and also a director of the Cultural Heritage Innovation Program of the Puerto Rico Science, Technology and Research Trust, a nonprofit organization whose mission is, con is, con is to contribute to achieving a well being of communities in Puerto Rico through technology, innovation, and research. Basically, I, I just want to thank Manos Barrio Foundation and artist Joaquin Fargas for the invitation and all the colleagues in the panel. And the year is taking a break as you, we all share this. Joaquin's laboratory complex thinking is, uh, is, is, a, is a way to generate uh, the commemoration of the, of the World Earth Day, but the continuity to reflect all over our Earth, you know, thinking about uh, no further. And briefly, uh, Puerto Rico have uh, many, many ways to think uh, about Earth, especially uh, the vulnerability we, we have or we have we face around hurricane earthquakes and so on. So we are working with Joaquin Fargas in a in a in a project, Pulsar La Tierra, which uh, further we can share more details. So thank you all. Okay. Thank you, thank you, Johnny. Um, Guillermo, what about you? <laughs> prepared. Hello everybody. Thank you Verena and Joaquin for the invitation. My name is Guillermo Winicki. I am an engineer and cultural manager also. I work for the National Technological University in Buenos Aires, Argentina. And I focus in promoting the connection uh, between art, science and technology also to contribute to take care of the environment. Okay, Perfect. short presentation. Thank you, thank you very much. And I think uh, our missing is Italy, Valentino. So. Hello, thank you for uh, inviting me. I'm uh, Valentino from Italy, Rome, as you said, and I'm a, a scholar and contemporary art curator. I'm now the director of the art section of the European edition of the Maker Fair and uh, art consultant uh, at uh, Sony Lab in Paris. Really interesting. And, uh, you know, you know my, my main theme, I mean, you know, my, my focusing on relationship between art and technology and between art and innovation, because I think that artists can also create not only content for contemporary artwork, but also real innovation working into with scientists and companies, etc. Really good, interesting. So it's you're also connecting the different sectors. I think that's something yes. we have all in common. We are like uh, thinking between the boxes and out of the box, not? Uh, so I think I will give the word to Joaquin. Christian, do you have any more information? Well, just some technical information for the audience again, maybe? Well, yes, it's important to stress that uh, the last time we had questions through Q&A in chat. We prefer if you ask your questions through the chat. So we have no, only one Q &A. column to look at. Sorry, oh, Q&A, Q &A, sorry. So then Q&A and not the chat. So this way we have only one column on the Q&A question side so we can go. Please start right, out, uh, right away uh, with your questions so we can start to collect all the different interests from the different parties. Okay. And uh, I think then we give the word to Joaquin so he can share now your uh, presentation. And uh, Joaquin, he will also answer the questions after his presentation, of course. So it will now like 20 minutes, 20, 30 minutes, maybe. We'll see. <laughs> uh, you're, you have to switch on your ITA. El tono. That's okay. Thank well, you. I'm, I'm going to give a presentation, a short presentation. I will try to, to keep it short. And now let's share the screen and, and I, okay. So the, the question is, uh, uh, what happened with the environment right now? Uh, this is uh, an image of, uh, you know, Australia, Australia on, on fire was last December. Uh, and now this is the image of the uh, a comparison between the level of pollution in China before the 
the pandemic, and now uh, it's just one month after China stopped the industrial production. And this is because this uh, presentation uh, has a name, the Earth is taking a, a break. And this is really a break for our planet. And now I'm going to talk about the, what can do our sense and technology? Or the question is, uh, what can do art for the environment? Has any ideas? Has uh, any solutions? Art is not supposed to have the right solution. It's not supposed to be science, but maybe something that we can uh, collaborate with the planet is like raising awareness for the climate change, for example, talking about some kind of solutions that could be weird or utopic solutions, but we have to do something. The question is uh, uh, that, for example, Christian said that we are, it's the first time from decades that we are in the, uh, with a common goal, the whole community. Um, I think this is the first time in the human, humanity history that we are fo following the same goal. We have the same objective. It's the very, very first time for the, the whole society. So for me, this is uh, important because, uh, you know, the objectives are mainly different, at least different or antagonic. Uh, they are cause wars. The human history is about the, the history of the wars. So this is the first time that we have a, a probably a great opportunity to transform this crisis in a great opportunity to work all together, thinking a new model of world. But we are going to talk about that later. I will start with some projects uh, from my own perspective, are projects that uh, maybe they can give a small contribution on a way of thinking about our planet, a way of thinking about uh, climate change and this kind of solutions. Uh, the first project is called the Biosphere Project. It's about putting some ecosystems inside a, a sphere, a container, and this ecosystem composed by plants and small animals, microscopic uh, algae or bacteria, uh, all together, work as a whole ecosystem. And my own purpose in this project is to provoke the people to uh, ask themselves questions. For example, questions like, are the, where did the oxygen came from? Why the plants can survive in a completely sea environment? And the answer to this question is that these small spheres are like our own planet. In an infinitesimal uh, scale, they represent our planet. And you can see the fragility of our world in this planet, in this small planet. The, all the resources are absolutely limited and are, are not endless that we think sometimes that the world is like that. This project has a educational problem associated. We encourage the students to make their own ecosystem and to follow how they can maintain this world, to take care of the world. In a small scale, they are taking care of our own planet. This is a small one you see on the table. The, the children make these small spheres to give to the, to deliver them to opinion makers, the decision makers, with the concept that the world is in their hands. The world is in the hands of everybody of us, but there are people that have more responsibility, like politicians or journalists. They receive these spheres 
with the concept that the world is in their hands and they have to do something. For well, now, I switched to other project. I went to ice to Antarctica. In the first expedition, I put three windmills on a glacier near the base Esperanza in the Argentine side. And these three windmills generate electricity and cool the glacier. The concept is that what can do this uh, three small windmills? It's impossible to make a, a change for the glacier. But the concept is that we must do something. Even if we don't know the result, we have to do something. If not, we have already know the result. These windmills, three windmills are called the project Don Quixote against climate change. And Don Quixote was this character from Cervantes that fight against windmills in the region of La Mancha in Spain, thinking that there were aliens, that the, the purpose was to take over the world. So this is the way that we can think that maybe we can tackle some uh, problems that may be huge problem, but we have to do something. The second time I went to Antarctica, I brought two robots called the glaciators. Glaciators, they were designed to fight against, the gla against climate change also, and they work to provide the, the glaciers more ice. They, as soon as start snowing, these robots start smashing the snow and transforming the snow into ice while adhering this to the measure, to the mass glacier. This is a process that naturally takes thousands of years, maybe millions of years, and maybe technology could help to accelerate this process and to maintain the, the glaciers. These are all projects that are under the, under the umbrella called the Utopia project, because they are utopic, they are real projects. But I encourage other artists to present projects, to work for encouraging the scientists of technologies now and in the future to do something. This is one of the pictures we have from the video. Of the aceto working. And some people ask me, how many of them we need to maintain the glacier? And I say, I don't know, this is just an art project, is to encourage the scientists to do something, to think outside the box, thinking another kind of project. But they, they have the, the purpose to raise awareness on climate change. And they, they did this project very well because we were presented in many places and the people felt, how you know, uh, they feel to do they feel that they have to do something about climate change. And this is the purpose of these small creatures working in Antarctica. This is another robot that went to other place called Atacama Desert in Chile, the driest place in the world. It's, NASA said that this was a spot with the less humidity in the atmosphere. And in this case, this robot has cells here that generate coal through solar panels. And this is called Radomante. Radomante was this uh, kind of person, this character that uh, could fill the waves generated from a source of water. And this is what is called Radomante, trying to find the water 
in the desert. This is also a, an utopian project. It's impossible to, to work with these uh, small, small creatures to make a change with the water. But what they generate is a new kind of cycle of nature. It's a new cycle of nature that maybe can be useful. We don't know. This is just another project, but expect to do something or a way of thinking. And also, as is a educational project, it was exposed in was exposed in Antofagasta in Chile, and this is the kind of new cycle of water that we can think. The sun transformed in a solar panel, the solar the sunlight is transformed into electricity, and in the peltial cells, which are cold, the cold condensates the water from the atmosphere, and we obtain water. The same sun that evaporates the water in the desert generates again retain, recover the water from the atmosphere. This is the kind of new cycle. Who knows, maybe it can be useful for the future. We don't know, but there are a lot of people asking us from the desert if we, they can use this with the old ancient uh, system that collect water with condensation, that maybe this could be a good uh, technological addition to the ancient technology. We don't know, but this is possible. Well, now I, I will introduce a complex of lab that is what we are trying to share all the ideas about the future of the, our planet. Maybe this is a great opportunity to start thinking if we could do something, thinking a new model of planet where we can change solidarity with what we are trying to do when this pandemic finish, we are thinking to come to the abnormal situation that was before. What about the uh, ceasefire? Ceasefire is all around the world. The first time that we have this uh, almost ceasefire everywhere. And what about after the pandemic? We are continue taking care of the life, or we start fighting again. Um, for example, a nuclear weapon costs more or less between 20 and 50 million dollars. With 20 million dollars, you can buy more than a thousand ventilators right now. What about thinking of the future of making a kind, changing the nuclear weapon arsenal by medical arsenals are to be prepared for another disease that could come in the future. And instead of having weapons, we can have medical equipment. Well, this is open to questions and to any, you know, all my work is about questions and we don't have the answers. Sometimes we can have a little answer, but it's about continue asking ourselves. This is a way that we can think other kind of life that could be possible. Maybe we are, the ideas are utopic, but for example, I like to talk to Antarctica, the place that uh, I'm very acquainted. And for me, Antarctica is the first time that uh, uh, it's a kind of continent that is between the utopia and the dystopia because the utopia ways because this is the first time that the whole the whole nations of the whole world they agree how to administrate a region of the world why can we think in our whole planet to be administrated like Antarctica. Okay, this is, 
I finished here, so we have time to debate and ask questions and continue with the panelists that uh, I think they have a lot of things to, to add to this presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Joaquin. Um, I truly believe that um, you, you just gave us a lot of information and uh, it's very clear that caring is not enough just sim simply caring is not enough and and we learned this lesson uh, in, as, as we have seen and now we have more time to think about it. um i would also like to to now to uh, ask the other the other members of the committee of the panel uh, to to help me out with some questions but uh, before we go to the other questions verena but i i really believe caring is not enough we are in the second phase because you know you you constantly read in the news um different kind of articles yeah we have to care for the environment yet yeah, but this is not enough now we have to go to another phase at, at least in, in my opinion i don't know what you think verena yeah i think it's it's uh i think going back to one of the things um joaquin said i we were a long time thinking about this model of how you can uh, translate for example the experience of antarctic uh to govern the antarctic area as a common common ground all together from different nations, no? And uh, if this could be a model for, for the whole world, this is for me one of the biggest questions because it actually already came up when we, some years ago, we were talking about this uh, regarding the Amazon area. Uh, you have the same topic. If the Amazon is the, uh, the, the lung of the, the world, um, why cannot we also take part in the decisions what happens to the Amazon area, to the deforestation, to every, everything what is happening there? Why is it uh, the, the, the right of Colombia to be able to make the deforestation or I just took a, play, <laughs> took a country or Brazil? For me, it's a big question how the world can participate and e each of everybody of us can really participate in the future decisions of, a, of, a, of the living of our species and the, on this planet. Um, I think this is the, one of the biggest questions. So how can we also participate, Joaquin? How can each of everyone participate in these big decisions? <laughs> well, this is, this is <laughs> it's a huge question because uh, it's about changing the mind that uh, we, we perceive the privacy or we perceive the uh, for example, how, how we, I think this is a great opportunity to change our minds because we are thinking of the, what separates us, uh, religion, race, everything is different. So uh, we try to be part of a, a you know, a country, for example, what about nationalism or what about patriotism? What is this about? It's about protecting the place and the place is our own planet. So this is a difficult decision. I think uh, Antarctica was an, an, an explored place, a place uh, where we, you cannot live. It's a place said that everybody wants to be there, but when you are there, you feel that there is no way to live there. So uh, you said, oh, I prefer to be in my place and where I have everything. There are no plants here, there are nothing grows. So because of that, there are no, uh, at first time, interested people. So they decide how to, to, to administrate that. Uh, coming back to the Amazon, that is a difficult issue. Amazon belongs, belongs to many different countries. And they said, we decide what to do in this country. We are not allowing people to think with us what we can do here, because this is about uh, sovereignty or something like that. It's not about uh, that you can make the decision for us. If you talk to Brazil, they, they said no. We don't allow people to talk about Amazon. Amazon is ours. Yeah. And that's a problem. I think is, uh, I don't know how we can change the minds of the people, but it's something utopic that we 
must think about that. How we can change and think that the whole world is just one world. And we have to think of that. But this is a, it's a big question, that one. With no answer. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Verena, shall we go uh, to our panelists, uh, maybe with some further questions? Yeah, I think Claudia is already prepared already now. <laughs> yes, hi. Um, I think we all agree that art has a fundamental role to promote critical thinking, that it's really important in this, this situation. And I'm thinking um, how in this time of social distance, um, how the traditional uh, spaces, the institution of art, museums, galleries, the cultural centers, how you, Joaquin, as an artist, do you think they had to transform or rethink the way they communicate art to the people? Well, uh, there are many, many ways I think of that. Uh, uh, <laughs> First of all, I don't agree with social distance. There is no social distance. We are connected right now, all together. What is, what is this Can about? Can I say something? <laughs> but for this institution, the, the public presentation is like a necessary. Yes, yes, I know. The, I know yeah, yeah, I, that's uh, why. <laughs> the whole world is talking about yeah. the social distance. I think uh, it's physical distance. We can talk about physical distance, but not social, because we are probably we are more connected than before. We have more connection with the people. We are uh, very busy these days. You call people, say, "Oh, no, uh, but you are at home. You can no. I have uh, three or four conferences, and I have no time. Uh, maybe next week." So it's, it's something surprising, but uh, I think. There are many ways to connect uh, the institutions with uh, Guillermo Winiki in 2004, we organized what we call the Global Museum. It was a way to connect the museums uh, where you cannot uh, visit in a physical way to connect them through internet. This could be a good op option to have this uh, Global Museum system today. In that day, in those days, in 2004, we put a robotic arm and he was in Buenos Aires in the uh, Centro Metropolitano de Diseño in Buenos Aires with the robotic arm that this robotic arm play with cues and you can change the names and you can control this uh, robotic arm through I went to the US and Europe and present the project with different people with a netbook in another book that would, you can control this. It was so new that the people were looking to the netbook as a new device because it's one of the first netbook in, in the world. And this was the first time that we can connect the museums to the people in an almost physical way because we have this telematic. But today the, you have a lot of opportunities and for example, Johnny Lugo from Puerto Rico trying to connect different institutions and to, there are institutions that have all the, the, the works uh, in digital, so you can share the works with the people. And there are other ways, for example, I was invited from Francis Naranjo, is uh, an artist from Europe, from Canarias, and in September, we are starting a, a, an exhibition, a digital exhibition of my work there, that is a previous exhibition for the physical exhibition that will take place in 2021. So there are many ways that uh, all the institutions can start working. And also these kind of conferences are, there are a lot of them managed by art institutions. So I think this is a way to, to be connected in, in the times of coronavirus and maybe art in the time of coronavirus is something that uh, 
maybe it's a, it's a good opportunity again to to connect better to each other. I think it's uh, what um, last time we talked with uh, Guillermo exactly about this topic that art is now looking for the people. Before it was around the other way around, the people were looking for the arts. Now the the art is looking for the people. So they come, the art is coming to us, to our house, uh, to our social media. Uh, we also would have had now uh, an exhibition in Usina del Arte about the plastic garbage project uh, project from an exhibition from Switzerland. And now we're planning to uh, do also a previous exhibition in just the social media. So it's really interesting. So we can actually meet people who would not have visited us. This is the interesting part. So now I think this, it's even more important that, that art, the, the role art plays in the right now, because we are we are more communicating, especially than, than before, maybe. It's very interesting what you're mentioning, uh, because I've, I see you, it's not a real, a real question, but we were, we were saying that we are united because we all have a common denominator, and this is the pandemic, then we are confined uh, at home. But uh, Andrea Costa is mentioning, well, it, it, it was, uh, Imagine was a beautiful song. It was, in a way, talking about this. Now, imagine if the world can leave us one, no? Sorry. <laughs> Imagine there were no people was also part of the text. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Also. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, Valentino, ¿quieres agregar? Uh, what, do you want to... Sometimes I always switch to Spanish, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can understand. I can also understand. <laughs> But actually, you know, uh, Joaquin knows very well that I really appreciate his work. You know, we are, he, he presented in the last year at the Maker Fair this uh, both, I mean, the, the robots both. And yes, well. um, it was very, very interesting. Also, he gave a lecture in Rome. Yeah, uh, and it was a very, very interesting. Um, because there is something to say which is very close related to uh, the vision of the artist. Because when we say human and uh, nature, we have two problems, human and nature, which are two big problems, actually. Uh, because uh, what the, it, it is all, it, the way in which we pose uh, the, 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 the matters around uh, Anthropocene, around, you know, um nature you know respecting the planet you know it's almost always not always but almost always a matter of dualism we create all the times with dualism you know human and nature bad and good and uh, now we are the baddie you know the human being is now the baddie and uh, the hurt you know this very general concept is the good so in my opinion, uh, if we really want to be, and uh, actually if when you, when you spread this into the society and to the common people, you know, the people understand this, but actually they feel very stressed. They feel very, you know, how, like, you know, oh, I'm doing something bad and I, I don't know how to handle it, you know, because it's too big. How can I help the planet? I'm in my home, you know, I can put the, the, the paper into the right trash and that thing is the right fresh, you know, and they, you know, this is a way to also, you know, to make people not only awareness, because it's not a matter of awareness, but it's a matter of guilty, you know. So we have to switch and we have to put the, 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 the arrow from guilty to awareness, which is a different thing. And in my opinion, you know, the, um, the work of artists can do that, you know, the work of artists can over um, step and uh, dualism you know and the work of joaquin you know uh, go goes beyond beyond the the dualism you know if we see the glaciator or uh, the rabdomante and it's very interesting because it is very interesting also also that uh, uh, joaquin always underlined the um, the the fact that someone uh, asked him um, how can you help the planet with this robot, you know? And he said, he replied, I'm an artist, you know? That's the thing, actually. So that Rapnomante is a symbolic fight 
against um, it's a symbolic fight actually. So it is much more important to see the raptomante than to hear many and many uh, speech that put the question always in in the dualism I was mentioning before. You know, bad bad and uh, and and uh, and uh, and good bad and good etc. And uh, so I guess I have to do a question. And then, uh, so my question is, uh, Joaquin, do you, how do you see your work to help the awareness and not to make people guilty? You know, how do you think it, your work can help to don't, to, 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 to go beyond, goes beyond the, the dualism? Well, this is uh, <laughs> another another kind of question for me. <laughs> okay, I, I I just can talk about the the people who I, how they behave after seeing my work, and this is the way that I can measure that. Uh, sometimes I have the opportunity, and I think it's about. Uh, for example, in, a, in talking about the biosphere, uh, 10 years ago, more or less, I gave a TED talk and I present the biosphere project. And when I finished my talk, I went to the bathroom and in the bathroom was a janitor there and asked me, ah, is, are you, is, is real that the plants can be maintained inside there? This is like our planet. And I thought, well, I'm in the right path, I'm in the right way. And then the, I communicate that to the, to the organizer, and they talk about this janitor during the conference. And it, it's a way that, you know, the people feel uh, touched in some way. And this is the way that they can encourage it. This is the way that they are, they don't feel guilty because of the, seeing the plants in the biosphere. They feel that they understand in better how the world uh, works and the fragility of our world. When we go outside, we see the sky and I think, well, oh, this is a planet, a, a huge planet. How can, I impact in the planet, but uh, we are more than seven, seven thousand five hundred millions in the planet. So, if everyone, everybody of us impact in the planet, we have a huge impact. But this is a way I think they don't feel guilty when they see the biosphere. The biosphere, as uh, Guillermo Winicki said. Uh, we, we have the pleasure to take the art to the people. The people don't have to go to a museum to see the, the biosphere. They are in the metro station in Buenos Aires in a huge installation. They are now uh, locked down, but uh, in the university in Cambridge, where the students can go through the, uh, to the place that are, they are crossing uh, the the place they, they are in the world, you know, they don't have to go to see specific art. And there are some projects that maybe they feel guilty and I want them to feel guilty when I talk about the nuclear weapons or something like that, or how we are, have to take uh, care of our planet. There are not, there are simple things that we can do, not just, collecting the specific trash to throw our waste. But for example, uh, there are uh, something that I like that they said, which is the best kilowatt generated? The best kilowatt is not from renewable energy, from coal, from oil. The best kilowatt is the, the kilowatt that we don't use. So this is the best kilowatt. So we have small things to do at home. Just don't use this kilowatt and 
This is the best kilowatt. This is a question that we have to, the encourage the people with this project. We have to do something because of that. We cannot go to Antarctica and try to fight with the ice. We don't know. Maybe, maybe we can make a, group, a huge machine that can transform the, the damage we made into the environment and recover the, the environment again. But there are many solutions. For example, in Costa Rica, they decide to not to grow crops in the, in the places that uh, was a jungle before. And they know that we, it, it will take 100 years to recover. But the first year of the 100 years is this year. Yeah. Okay. I will give the word to Johnny. Johnny, he has some comments and questions. Yeah, yeah no, I, just, I just want to point very, very quickly that I am very agree with, with, with the discussion. And, and it's very interesting that when, 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 when I come from, it's an island. So we are very limited in resources. So solutions and problems are quite like a perfume, like a, like a, a concentration of something. No? It's very little, but it's very concentrated. And trying to appoint something maybe that is a problem is such the same way to get into the solution. So few people have to be agree in something in common. So Joaquin, my question for you is that how can we start to, to rethink a better world by means of a non-monetary solidarity as a common ground sense? And, and I think that education is, is a way of, of do that. So maybe we can start thinking about the, maybe a, a nature citizen, or something like that representing a, a new way to, to face the understanding of the complexity and dualism that, that Valentino was saying between the struggle of how far or how near is our relation with Earth? Well, I think, uh, first of all, uh, when, I, when I hear uh, education, I think the education is the key for, for everything. Education is the key for the future. Because we are in, a, in many ways, we need to change the way of thinking and the way that uh, we have to be uh, less monetized, as you said. Because uh, maybe in the future we don't need money because we have everything from, from the others. If we have a solidarity, we have everything for the others. And there are a lot of people very keen to share with the others their knowledge, for example. And uh, I think this uh, and uh, the, the world is changing because of that. It's changing maybe, uh, do we need in the future a copyright? Why, why we have a, a copyright? It's about, copyright is about money. But if we don't need money, we don't need a copyright. We just share with the people, uh, what about, People uh, doing research to take a, to find the vaccine for the COVID-19. They are. What are the the intentions? They they want to have money for that. They want to be rich, or they are just uh, having the the satisfaction of doing something for the others in these uh, complicated days. I think that. Uh, education is, uh, we have to change the way to educate right now because we are educating the people for future jobs. Uh, you said the people, you, if you study, you will have a good job in the future. If not, you, there will no jobs for the people. And I think, why are you studying for a job? Because there will be no jobs in the future. So uh, the people say, oh my God, there will be no jobs. It, yes, it's a, sorry for the politicians, but there is not the, the slogan you have for the future. The politicians say, vote me, I will create a, one million of jobs. And how? It's not option. The technology says there are no jobs for the people. 
If you see the Tesla factory with all the, the robotics arm building the robot there in this new film called Planet of Humans that suggested uh, Guillermo Winicki to see yesterday and Verena, uh, I saw it and you see these robots and said, there's no people there. So there are no jobs. We have to teach the people how to do with, the, with their time. Not the spare time, with the whole time. And we need these people that need to be connected to nature. Because if they are not connected to nature, we have no future. What about the future? But we are, we said, well, the world stopped, stop, there are no transportation, you see less pollution everywhere, the factories, but for how long? We are, we all of us need energy, but maybe less energy than we think we need. So I, I have no answers, exactly answers. I have more questions, but it's about questions. Maybe in the future there will be no money. Just uh, what I call a G U E is a global environmental unit that can, you know, manage the world instead of the money. Who knows? Um, actually, Joaquin, we had some years ago, you had a, another project called uh, BioCredit, Credit, no? And it was a system of, especially of an uh, alternative money, uh, which was uh, the, dioxy the, the carbon dioxide, actually, consumption we had also from all the, the, actually the ecological footprint. So considering the use of goods we had per day, no, something like this is, uh, this is our biological, our credit. So maybe. Yes, it's something, something, something like that. Uh, uh, yes, in, in 2008, I, I was working in uh, what I call the environmental credit project. And it was having well, many different ideas. For example, it, it was based in the future. When I connect with some uh, lawyers, asking about the, the rights of the future generation. They, they said the, right, the, future, the future generation have no rights. Why they have no rights? Because to have rights, you have to be alive. If you are dead, you have no rights. As you are not born, you have no rights. And say, well, so let's talk about potential rights. Potential rights is about the kind of, the, the rights that are maybe in the future we are, for sure, the people is uh, giving birth every day. They are. So, uh, and 10 years ago, 10 years later, there are some uh, people that they are fighting for the future generation from the uh, just perspective. And in this case, I have this uh, uh, environmental credit card. It was just uh, to play it's an art project, again, where you can play with these cars and you receive in the community the cars with the environmental credits you can use, uh, for example, for transport, for uh, eating, for uh, everything, for using energy. And maybe in the future we will be born with these credit cards that we can use uh, this the whole life. And I plan to make an exhibition of uh, we use during our whole life. And it was impossible to make it because we, we don't have the money for the exhibition. We just make some infographies of our, uh, the things we use during our whole life. And for example, we use in more or less 4,000 oil barrels during our whole life, all thousand. Oil. So it's a huge amount of oil barrels that we need for our whole life. Maybe we can save some of them. If you see this in a project, the whole things that you 
used during our life span is terrible. So maybe how many cars you can put on a pile, how many, you know, uh, brush teeth, uh, how many uh, amount of floor, for example. So, well, this is part of the project uh, you mentioned. <laughs> Um, I don't know if somebody wants to contribute something. I had actually just some ideas because I yesterday I saw them the documentary of uh, Planet of the Humans and this was really interesting because he's really critical with all these renewable energy systems now and um, he said is it one question is really is is it possible for machines made by civil industrialization to save us from civil industrialization? That was a question part of the movie, which was really made me thought and uh, made me think like, we are trying to solve everything with technology. Um, so now we work with art, science and technology. <laughs> what do you say about this? Or do the rest also now, but just to reflect a little bit about that. Anyone yeah, well, to answer? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, well, yeah, it's a very interesting question. Uh, AE, AI will re replace a lot of the things that we are doing right now. Uh, it's very clear. And now we are, we are not only having the problem that we will have, we are going to work in a different way for, for sure in the midterm everywhere. We are going to have sooner than, than, than expected uh, AI all over. And this will replace a lot of jobs. I mean, I think the whole thing is, is related. Yeah, and I think it's also, this is part of the big discussion right now, especially this control of ENA to my privacy, to, to everybody, how, of, how each of us is living. Zoom is one of the technologies big criticized, mm -hmm. no? But about yes. the security problems, but uh, we share. How can we share know-how and protect our privacy at the same time and, and be... Um, not uh, observed by somebody I don't want to be observed. I don't know what, it's, it's this part of the question of our future life. It is really interesting because uh, we knew, I mean, we knew that there is something that can follow us uh, for every step we are doing, but now we know exactly that this is very, very easy and very easy to do because now the governments are following, can follow each of us on GPS. Uh, I mean, some countries are using this for the coronavirus. So this is re now uh, the new reality that we, we do know that uh, if a government wants, they can follow us with our mobile phones and know exactly where we have been, what we have done, uh, what we have done and with whom. And even though, uh, even though we, we knew that, now we are sure that this is feasible. And this is, a, I believe this is a very different, different perception. Now we are completely sure that it's, this is something that is happening. Yeah. I want uh, to ask something, uh, the question you said, uh, what happened with industrialization? that maybe is against the environment. The, the same uh, products that we make to fight against nature or to have, for example, in this case, renewable energy came from the industrialization process. So like a winding, for example, was the example they put in the, in the movie. Uh, but I think that the, maybe we are, we are going very fast. For example, uh, the cell phones are, every year they consume less energy. So this is a way that we have, we have to think about what main problems is energy. And we can tackle this problem if we think using less energy instead of uh, replacing the energy with other, kind of or other source of energy and in the movie they they don't talk about nuclear energy they're very cautious not to talk about that i don't know 
uh, why didn't yeah. you talk about nuclear energy? It was interesting. Yeah, because, because uh, uh, it's something you have to have the whole picture, not just uh, maybe it was just because of the renewable energy that it was like a slogan for many companies to to talk about the environment and to you know to feel less guilty of to show the people that they were doing something for the environment. But I think that uh, when we talk about the, uh, these big uh, machines that we have to make or this uh, complex uh, solar panels that need uh, silicon, but not just silicon from the sun, we need quartz or something like that and make, uh, we need go coal also to, to make that. Uh, we are talking about complex uh, technology. When we, we talk about uh, AI or artificial intelligence, it's different because we, we don't need too much energy to apply the artificial intelligence to, to something that could be good for, for the common good. Okay, yeah. I think it, it's about energy and more than the technology itself. Christian, we want to go to one question we have here right now, no? in our room. Valeria. Valeria. Ah, Guillermo oh. también. He's raising the hand. Guillermo, do you want to speak before? Or do you want to also want to answer the question? It will be the, I give you the task. <laughs> no, okay. but the answer, actually the question was given directly to Joaquin. So, and then I think we oh, can all, yes. all reflect on it anyway. Yes, yes. Uh, with Joaquin, uh, we have worked together in several projects for almost 20 years. Uh, without doubt, his art is a, a good tool to communicate your or our uh, objectives. But uh, from uh, your point of view, uh, how could uh, it spread it uh, to a global scale? Could you follow me? <laughs> So how uh, how how can sorry uh, could uh, could spread it uh, spread it to yes. global scale? Uh, yeah, that's it. Well, this is uh, not easy, no. No, obviously. <laughs> I think. Well, uh, if you have any idea. idea. <laughs> No, I think that the, that's a, a problem is about we are we are uh, in different in different sidewalks. For example, the, when you talk about money, money is in one side, and we talk about the environment is in the other side, and that's a, a problem when you have an, an idea to spread these ideas uh, worldwide. Uh, there is no way that we, we don't have the, the media to, to make that. It's just about, sometimes it's about opportunities and sometimes about uh, how the idea, uh, you know, uh, I think, well, I have no answer how, I have no, uh, okay. uh, uh, I, maybe I have, a lot of ideas, but they, they are not uh, thinking how I can spread this uh, to the whole world. Yeah. Maybe it's a good opportunity to, to come back, but because it's a global thinking, but a local action. And I think this will be more and more clear again right now. We are more and more connected globally, but we, have, we are now really reduced to act very locally because we cannot uh, get out of our houses no so i think ooh, and this will be especially sorry <laughs> um uh, a big question for for the future and also this is also here the question of valeria she was asking okay. um and, and i think um johnny wanted to answer this question you're right nah, technology yes and 
And she was asking yeah, Joaquin about his opinion. How are we preparing future generations to take care about the environment? Are we educating our children and are we doing enough? Do you want to answer that, Johnny? No? Oh, okay, I <laughs> go for it. <laughs> well, uh, I think that uh, we are not doing enough. Uh, of course, we are not doing enough because it's not about uh, sometimes uh, you need to be more, uh, you need to go more in deep of this uh, question because uh, when you talk about the, the environment or we talk about green, being green, a lot of people talk about being green, but uh, if you want to educate about being green, you have to start of being more or less consuming and, uh, you know, looking for some uh, educating in, in very specific uh, tasks that you can do because of the, the environment. Uh, today, you know, the children have a lot of toys, there are a lot of toys, and even the, the poor have a lot of toys because the rich kids have so many toys that they are very, very keen to give the toys to other kids. So there are a lot of toys in the world. And how much of this, of them are needed, really needed? So how we can educate, telling the kid, for example, that he has to be more, to have to save a lot of things in, in the world. What about the clothes, about everything? So I think we have to start educating on that, continue educating on the environment in, in a lot of things that, for example, the, the food, the food is, a lot of food is processed before. Why don't you, we can use less uh, food that came from the cans or boxes or whatever. If you can have uh, in the grocery, you have vegetables, you have fruit, have every, a lot of things that they are just came that you take them from, from nature. I think we can educate on, on that, how we can use uh, things that are less yeah. industrialized, like you were talking about industrialization, all the, a lot of food is, came from the industrialization and education is, Sorry. it's not just one subject, one time, once a week, it's about all day long about the environment. We are living in the environment, we are using the environment, we are part of the environment. So education is about that. It's education are us in the environment, us as part of the environment. Actually, um, I would like yeah. to do a lot in the future. Of <laughs> course, we are not doing enough. No, that's true. And I would like to add something here because that's the main part of our daily work. And also I think of Frank's work in La Patanal is, one, is, trying, is to work with kids and to work with schools. So actually here in Buenos Aires, we have a, a lot of difficulties sometimes to get the kids out of the school and to get into contact with nature because they really need special permissions to, to have an excursion or to make an excursion. So I think especially the contact with nature is really important and to to get to know um, how you are prepared to, to be in nature for a longer time. So like going camping, or I think the most of the, the kids today, and we had like a gardening project with um, three, four years old, and they were afraid to touch earth. They were really afraid to touch the plant because they're like, Ugh. <laughs> so it's, it's this part of, getting into contact with nature again, which is really important, I think. And um, this is especially here, what Isia is also saying in our questions. What about going back to kindergarten outside, such as wild kindergarten, the, the kindergarten in the forest. We had that in Germany. I was, I was a kid, I was in the outside in 
nature every day and my parents didn't even see me but today it's like everybody's so panicked about the, the security of their children and and the protection it's really over protection especially you know but i think this is a, an important idea an important part of it and i think this is also questioning our lifestyle so a lot of parents right now they're locked in with their kids in the apartment and cannot leave i think the first thing they will do is go when they can go out again go to a park or go to uh, even further in the in the forest and be there in contact with nature and then they will see also how how much they were missing it i guess just my personal reflection here <laughs> Yes, I think that is, is, is good, this question about Isia, that uh, we have to go outside for, and not just for kindergarten, from every level, school level, yeah. you must do that. Uh, sometimes I, well, uh, talking about the earth and the touch, and, uh, I was working with some kids uh, many years ago in the science center, and, and they got, uh, you know, uh, all the clothes were with uh, mud and something there and, and one of the kids said oh my my mother is going to punish me because i'm i get absolutely dirty and it was terrible i was uh, it was pity for me because this kid was uh, start to crying because of my mother it was going to punish him because he was dirty because he was working with the ass and that's terrible. And I think the, I think that maybe school will be outside. You just uh, gather sometimes at school, but you every day you have an expedition to everywhere. A, a school bus is waiting for you, going to a factory, to a, a crops, uh, visiting the farms, and whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, I think. I, I understand that it's difficult to organize, but this would be uh, the way that you can educate uh, people in real life, not uh, in a box. Yeah, exactly. My reflection is, uh, I don't know if you agree, Joaquin, but since we were not being very gentle with the nature, now we are going to learn and to uh, really appreciate how nice nature is. Are we going to really appreciate nature after the pandemic? Or, or I believe we, we all miss it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we miss nature, but uh, uh, the, the problem we are going to, you know, to be committed to, to you know, to, to take care of nature. Mm. That's a question. <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. And we were talking about it last time again that, for example, the United States or Germany, uh, the, the voices in order to help economy, that we uh, make it may more, how you see, uh, that we uh, low, lower the, um, the control, the environmental control, and the, uh, especially the textile Terrible. industry in Germany was reclaiming that they could not produce the hygiene mask up, uh, next year again because the European Union forbid the the chemical parts they need for the production of these masks so uh, it's it, there you see again how um how you say dual or how how this two parts of the view we are we are entering right now and and trump also he said he, he will definitely set out uh, the con environmental controls in order to let do the companies what they want to do so i that was some some news i will really shocked me the last uh, the last week. So I think um, we will have a lot to do as artists, as uh, communicators and as educators to, to really get also politicians and especially the economy people and the responsible persons back on track, back on track in order to, to do something good. <laughs> you know, well, it, I think it's about the duality that, uh, that Paul Valentino, it's about how, how we can be just just one, because uh, I think we will come again to the when you talk about this uh, Germany will will buy next year the the mask from China without any problem, and 
you think that the, there are a lot of parts of the world that are kind of backyard that where you send all the trash there and all the things to there. And there are many countries that, are, like Finland, for example, Finland, they, they have a lot of regulations in Europe to put a paper factory, so they decide to put the paper factory in, in the Uruguay River. So, uh, and you are talking about the best, uh, you know, it's a kind of a country in the world that are the best about the environment. But uh, I told all these people that, I, I, will, I want to tell these people that if they are not uh, guided by solidarity to make a better world, Maybe you have to think about the convenience to have a better world because we are all connected. And if you are doing something wrong or bad in other part of the world, we are all connected through the air, through the water, through everything. So if you are not talking about solidarity, just talk about convenience. Right. Um, are you, can I say something? Absolutely. Yeah, I'm just. Um, I think also that we, so the educational uh, mother issues is very important. You know, I agree with that, you know, because I think that we, uh, it must also to be changed the way in which we educate. So the educational strategies, you know, uh, also, for instance, you know, the new kind of educational, they're not new anymore, actually, but like learning by doing, for instance, you know, and, you know, and more practical and, and as you were saying, you know, in direct contact. With the um, with the theme you 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 are lear you are teaching you know so the the educational strategy which is very very difficult because it's easy to say but it's more difficult to um, to 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 practice you know even if you know even in Italy you know there are many uh, new uh, wave or to educate that that are growing and then you know and I think also that we can. It could be also uh, good, you know, to change the vocabulary, uh, for instance, unless uh, we still use some 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 uh, terms like uh, we still speak of uh, nature in a very general way, you know. And there is a very interesting book uh, brought by written by uh, Timothy Morton that you probably I don't know if you heard it, you know, which is called you know hyper object which is criticized this con general concept of nature, you know, which is uh, something that creates only dualism. So, uh, but, and uh, he, he talks about hyper, hyper object, you know, that, you know, that to, to, to be more uh, close to the real um, hyper object, so object very, very big that for us is very difficult to understand. Like for instance, climate change, you know, it is an object and it is something very big that we are, that we experience only when we we feel something of, of our body, you know. So also um, a reflection on change, starting to, to change the vocabulary could be helps in my opinion, and you know, go behind you know the dualism we were we were seeing before. Yeah. I yeah, good good reflection as well. Um, yeah, absolutely. We have another. We have another question here, and I think we have some eight minutes left uh, in order to stay in time today. Okay. <laughs> um, so it would be a good uh, opportunity to go back to politics and to international politics because the question here is from Miguel Angel Hildman. He's from the UNESCO in Paris, and he's uh, reflecting or asking uh, to Joaquin, "Do you think that UNESCO?" Uh, is to play a role after, um, during and after the pandemic and which one? So what sh I should do based on your per personal experience? Wow, <laughs> it's a huge question. Maybe I have to think a lot of the, this question. But uh, well, I think, uh, you know, UNESCO has a, a important role in, in many many ways because of education so I think that uh, education is the key of this so uh, UNESCO has many things to do during and after the pandemic which one exactly uh, I don't know exactly but 
I think that uh, as an, an institution that has is an important institution and honorable institution, uh, you have to make, uh, I think the, the role is to, first of all, during the pandemic can fight again against the fake news, for example, uh, detect the fake news. So today there are a lot of news about the pandemic that are uh, viralized in, in different media and institutions like UNESCO have to check this, maybe this uh, uh, fake news and say, well, this is the real thing here. Uh, do we have, for example, a vaccine right now, or we have to wait for some time? Or we have that, or that? Maybe that is, is something that could be done during the pandemic. And maybe in the future, we have to change about, uh, uh, I work a lot with UNESCO, uh, mainly in Montevideo, because they have this, this science uh, uh, program in, in Montevideo and Uruguay, and we work with them with uh, all we has to do with the uh, popularization of science. Science is for everybody, and now we add art also for everybody. And there are many projects with, connected with art, science, and technology, and can be based on UNESCO. And this would be a good opportunity. Uh, I work with. Uh, Ernesto Fernandez Paul Kuch, that has to be your, your companion, your mate. And maybe this is a good opportunity to start thinking of doing something together from this perspective. Uh, the perspective from the arts is, uh, you know, which is the difference between science and art. We expect from the science some real solution. And uh, what do we expect from the arts is maybe something a more triggering idea solution not try a, a solution exact solution my baby we expect or i expect from the art to encourage the people the people including science and technology to think uh, outside the box to think that something could be done and i like to say that uh, i I have, I finished some of my conference saying we have to do something even if we don't know the results, because if we do nothing, we already know the results. So we have to do something. And this is the, the way that we can use the art uh, connected with science and technology. And maybe this is a way that UNESCO could encourage uh, this project to, to grow. Yeah, and also to share because you have uh, the UNESCO has the international uh, connection as the international power to communicate also these ideas visions and uh, and the different solutions you're developing now like the inspirational art and the the solutions from science so i think this is one of the biggest parts of the responsibility also for for unesco to use more the communication power well Two minutes left, so I don't know if, if somebody else has some more. Um, like here we have some and learning to do with work with ITC, with all the sectors. Cultural sector is doing a lot and education sector too. Yeah, that's def definitely the point. Uh, ITC is helping us to connect with different sectors, and especially to, to use to also the, the, to develop to, uh, and ideas together. This is the, the great thing of our time right now we, we are sitting in different parts of the world and thinking together so uh, we are here a, a new think tank and maybe we should get together to become a make tank <laughs> no <laughs> i think uh, after some of the conferences we have to decide what do we really do now and together <laughs> okay i think uh, just a final idea came up yesterday when when I was thinking about this, and um, maybe it's the time that we have to be less human. <laughs> because being human is not good for the environment. Maybe we have to be less human and a little bit more animal. Because the animals are the only that take care of the environment. They take care of their habitats. And we are not taking care of our own planet. So be less human. 
Good question to, to keep on uh, discussing. You will start also a wiki on the complex th thought lab, no? what you're planning or what you're doing or what we are already part of. Yeah. So yeah. I think um, actually I just want to, to say thank you to everybody for spending the time. Some of you in Argentina, they spend your lunch break and in, in Germany or in Europe, you spend your um, evening and you you can already start to celebrate uh, in Germany you would celebrate now to dance into the May it's a it's a telling because tomorrow we have first of May and you usually dance all together and drink and have fun so we were already thinking of maybe do some dance together here with Zoom tonight <laughs> but um, yeah I hope you can do this soon again so if from our part from my part thank you very much to everybody and um, we are open for any questions. And um, if you want to keep on continuing the dialogue, we will, sub, you know, we will upload this video on YouTube and you can leave your comments there as well. And um, yeah, it will be a great pleasure to see you next time. Okay. Thank you, Verena. Thank you for being you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, thank you everybody. Thank you, thank you everybody. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for Joaquin Bye. for spending your thoughts and your inspiration. <laughs> okay, thank you so thank much. You. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, everybody. Uh, thank you for being in time. It is 2.31, yeah. so we are right on time for the people to uh, don't, uh, you know, don't waste time. And <laughs> keep Ciao. Talking. Ciao. Ciao, Valentina. Sherman, oh, punctuality. <laughs> yes, this time. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.